Well, here it is, guys. The first Western book I'm going to read. I'm excited. Let's do this. What's up guys, welcome back to Unlimited Reads. My name is Chris and I'm excited to announce that today is the first day of my brand new reading vlog for Lonesome Dove by Larry McMurtry. This is the first Western book I'm going to attempt. I'm excited, I'm prepared to spend most of October reading it. And uh, just like my other vlogs, the format is going to be the same. It's going to be unscripted, so if I uh, stutter or whatever, who cares? Uh, that's the format I like for a vlog to take. And look, I started the book, read the first chapter, and immediately I really like Larry McMurtry's writing voice. Uh, the characters have been introduced, the tone has been set, and I just like the conversational quality of the writing. Now, I'm not sure how many videos is going to make up the entire vlog. I'm thinking I might split it into about six to eight videos, just depending on how I go. If anything uh, momentous happens that I'm excited about in the book, I'll share that straight away, but the updates won't be scripted and uh, they'll be at various intervals. And uh, you know, I'm thinking it'll take me a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks to get through it, but uh, it is ranked the number one book in the Western genre on Goodreads and it has countless uh, really good reviews so uh, certainly I can't go wrong and uh, if I was going to ever jump into the Western genre this is the book to do it with and uh, yeah I'm looking forward to reading more Westerns in the future but uh, stand by guys I will be giving updates on a fairly regular basis maybe one or two videos a week at this stage in between weekly updates and other things that pop up on the channel but uh, yeah I'm excited but first impressions are really good at the moment and uh, I'm excited to dig in so until my next update guys see you later so here we are guys for another reading update for my vlog on Lonesome Dove by Larry McMurtry at the time of filming this I'm about 228 pages in I've just finished part one there are three parts in total and I thought after finishing part one it's the perfect spot to stop and give you an update on my thoughts and reactions and uh, impressions of the first portion of the book. Now the writing is great. Larry McMurtry has a really unique way with words. He has explored all the characters, all the main characters in detail now. Part one was all about setting up uh, the foundation for what is to follow on this massive cattle run from Texas, the southern Texas border, right up to the rich pastures of Montana. Now, I've gotten to know a lot of the main characters in the first part of the book, and all the characters have interesting backgrounds and backstories. And I find what's fascinating is that McMurtry, at regular intervals, if he's um, writing about uh, Captain Call or Gus, for instance, he is alluding to their past adventures. and. It just makes you think, well, I'd really like to read a bit more about their adventures and uh, can do that uh, with future books. I believe there's about three books after this one. The next one is called The Streets of Loretto, where uh, there are further adventures of uh, Cole and Gus. And all the characters are multidimensional, which uh, is a rare thing. Uh, they're fleshed out. Uh, Lorena, for example, uh, the, the whore of Lonesome Dove, yeah, that's her trade, but there's so many more layers to her. Uh, one character, uh, Gus, in fact, is uh, a frustrating character to me. Uh, he's still interesting to read, but compared to Cole, he's lazy, he's laid back, nothing seems to phase him. When you read how he interacts with the, the characters, all you want to do is... Uh, punch him in the face and see if you can get a rise out of him. He is so cool, calm and collected and always has smart ass comments. He has a loud voice, uh, it carries for over a mile. Uh, when uh, Cole, early on in the book, uh, breaks away from uh, the evening meal where they're sitting around the campfire, he just likes to be on his own and you can still hear Gus in the distance uh, gobbing off. Um, so yeah, he has some annoying traits, but he's at the same time, he's very, uh, very interesting. And towards the end of part one, we have all the characters assembled. So uh, Cole has hired on extra cowboys to assist with the big cattle run up to Montana. The way that Cole and Gus got the cattle in the first place was a little bit um, questionable in terms of lawfulness, but uh, they've got this big, massive herd. 
that they want to move up to Montana. And the funny thing about this is Cole and Gus were, uh, they've spent 10 years on this isolated ranch where it probably rains once a year and uh, it's a hard life. But it's not until one of their former, they, they both used to be uh, Texas Rangers and when Jake uh, turns up, who used to uh, range with them, he inspired them to go out to Montana and Call jumped at the opportunity and then Gus is sort of like, whatever, oh, yeah, I'll, I suppose I'll tag along. And at, at times Call is very frustrated with Gus because he's just lazy and just sits there and drinks the afternoon away uh, more often than not. But uh, I really enjoy how McMurtry's brought together the end of part one so that everything is set for the journey up north. And we're talking, uh, I think it's about two and a half thousand miles on horseback, camping at regular intervals, uh, putting their lives at risk because there are outside elements like uh, Comanche Indians and the Sioux, uh, cow other rival cowboys and bandits and nature itself. So now that uh, I'm just about to start part two, I'm expecting uh, a bit of the action to pick up and the perils along the way. I'm really interested in how the characters are going to develop more on the trip. I think a trip like this really would test certain characters. And uh, yeah, I'm just enjoying the ride and uh, you know, it's gonna take me a little while to get through, but you know, I'm not rushing this. I wanna enjoy it, I wanna digest it. And more importantly, I don't just want to read it, I want to experience it. And Larry McMurtry's writing style allows you to do that. He paints a very vivid picture on how uh, the Texas hard pan, how life there is hard, uh, just explaining the heat and the dust and uh, you know the filth and uh, yeah, and the, and the actual work that goes on uh, at the ranch at the beginning of the book. It's really something and it's a real eye-opener for me. I had no idea that Western books were this good and uh, it's certainly going to make me read more in the Western genre moving forward. So that is it for another update, guys. I will probably give another update, another 100 or 200 pages in. By that time, I expect to be uh, right in the throes of it. Um, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of action and drama as the book has advertised, and so far it's certainly delivered on that promise. So uh, there we go. Until the next update, guys. See you later. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another reading vlog update for Lonesome Dove by Larry McMurtry. I'm well into part two now. I'm progressing pretty well. I'm just about up to page 400, and it won't be long before I'm crossing the halfway mark. And let me tell you, things are really starting to pick up and get really interesting. So what have the characters been up to since the last update? So we find that Cole, Gus, and the outfit made up of various cowboys and a few last-minute hire-ons, including the local piano player, Player from the tavern at Lonesome Dove and the cook and two little characters Gus's blue pigs have tagged along for this massive massive journey so they're ready to set out with this massive uh, herd of cattle that they're going to take up to Montana two and a half thousand miles away the I can't imagine how daunting the journey would be they Lonesome Dove is located right near the Mexican border on the southern uh, part of Texas. Now Texas isn't a, a small state by any means. You can imagine uh, how the conditions would be, uh, the hot dry conditions uh, through most of the state of Texas before they get up to the greener pasture lands of Kansas and Nebraska and finally into Colorado and up to Montana which I believe is located up near the Pacific Northwest and yeah um, I'm really really enjoying the book uh, so far. Now I mentioned in a previous update that nature would be a challenging factor besides the human threats like cowboys and bandits and Comanche Indians and you know weather conditions but nature certainly uh, would play a part as I predicted and that prediction came true uh, when I read a particular scene. Now with this scene just remind me never to cross a river on horseback and get set upon by an angry swarm of water moccasins or river snakes. Uh, that wouldn't be a good way to go at all. Uh, one character loses their life but I'm not going to tell you who that character is so it's not actually a spoiler. I really am getting to know all the characters a lot better. Uh, all the layers are being peeled back. 
I'm finding out new things about the characters that um, is surprising. Uh, one character in particular, one of the main characters is Gus, who you might remember in a previous update, I found that he was annoying. He was lazy, he was too laid back, his voice was loud. He had an answer for everything. He had so many smart ass comments and uh, a derogatory uh, demeanor towards other characters. But as time has gone on with some of his actions recently, he is beginning to grow on me. And I never thought that would happen because he was such an annoying prick. But uh, I'm really enjoying reading about him. Uh, Captain Cole himself is an intriguing character. He doesn't say much. He doesn't really uh, talk with other characters. At meal times, he prefers to go off on his own and clean his gun and uh, just be alone with his own thoughts. He's a very complex character. And now uh, I'm only just seeing layers peel back about him and his past. He's really haunted and hurt by his past. And I think that adds a really good, interesting dimension to Cole because he um, he's a very distant character and I believe all the characters find it hard to access him and draw him into a conversation because uh, he feels that um, uh, they're not really worthy of a conversation with him. So he's a very uptight character, but we're learning more things about him, which uh, I'm really, really enjoying. And I think how Larry McMurtry juggles the characters is really good. He spends an equal amount of time between the characters so that you get in their heads and um, get to know what they're doing, what they're feeling and how they're uh, advancing the plot lines. And uh, yeah, just really, really enjoying that aspect of it. Now, uh, part two included the introduction of several new characters as well. We have uh, a Sheriff July Johnston, who is the Sheriff of Fort Smith, I think the name of the town is. This is the town where Jake Spoon, who is uh, uh, one of the higher ons for the cattle drive, he used to be a Texas Ranger with Cole and Gus back in the day, but he got into a situation in a tavern in Fort Smith and he was involved in a shooting. Now he shot at someone in the tavern, but apparently the bullet went through a wall and hit the local dentist across the street. So naturally, uh, the dentist's uh, wife certainly wants revenge and she has put pressure on July Johnston to go and find Jake Spoon, bring him in and hang him uh, and see that justice is done. So there's a, a forthcoming interaction or, uh, or confrontation there, which I'm anticipating. So uh, things are starting to ramp up. And we also meet Roscoe, who is July's deputy, who is also uh, on his own mission. And July's wife, Almira, is a very, very complex woman who uh, is difficult to read. Uh, I don't know why July ever married her. Uh, she only married him uh, as a matter of convenience. And uh, yeah, it's a very, very complicated relationship. And uh, you know, it's, um, it's puzzling to read. You think, why? Would a man put up with a woman like that? But uh, July is obviously a complex character as well. So I'm really enjoying getting to know the new characters. And just recently in the last 50 pages or so, I've also encountered Blue Duck, who uh, is a local comanchero who strikes fear into the hearts of locals in uh, a lot of settlements across Texas and beyond. He actually steals horses. He kills people. Uh, he's like an assassin and he also steals children to give to Comanche tribes to do what they will, which is pretty difficult to read at times, but uh, uh, he's already had an encounter with Gus at a local river where uh, it's, it's really interesting because we get to know a bit of Gus and McCall's backstory when they were Texas Rangers. Uh, they believe that Blue Duck was dead back when they were uh, protecting the uh, uh, the state of Texas, but he's very much alive and he uh, is very in indicative of a threat to the cattle drive. So it's going to be really, really interesting on how that pans out. So now we're finding that things are really ramping up and plot lines are being divided so that you uh, get to know what all the characters are doing. And as I said, Larry is really good at balancing 
how much time is spent with each character. The chapters are shorter in part two, which is um, a good thing in itself because you'll finish a chapter and you're getting so much into the story and immersing yourself into uh, the novel that you just want to read on. So things are really beginning to pick up. I'm loving McMurtry's writing. It uh, is spellbinding. He isn't uh, boring. He doesn't waffle on with too much exposition or anything like that. He paints a picture just enough for you to visualize what the environment is like and what the um, he he writes Texas very well in describing um, the the mesquite thatches, you know, the prickly bushes, and just the uh, overall fauna and flora of the area. And uh, yeah, the detail is great, but it's not you're not having it rammed down your throat and no big info dumps or anything like that. So there you go, guys. I am loving this book. I don't regret picking it up for a second. It's definitely one for the bucket list and I can't wait to uh, move further into the story. I'm really um, invested now and I'm anxious to find out what happens. So, uh, you know, being at almost the halfway part of the book, I'm expecting to fly through the remaining half because, the, as I said, things are ramping up and things are really progressing. And, uh, you know, I reckon in a week or a week and a half, I might actually fly through it because um, it's just getting better and better and better and just can't wait to see what happens. So there you go, guys. That is my latest update. Uh, there will be a few more updates, so uh, stay tuned for that. And uh, I'm not sure when the next one will be. I'll probably uh, do another one. Uh, at page 600 possibly or if not before but uh, so excited to be reading this book and until the next update guys I'll see you later good morning everyone I'm back with another reading vlog update for Lonesome Dove by Larry McMurtry I am currently on page 494 I'm close to finishing part two really looking forward to getting into part three I am loving the book so far as much as I have from the start. I think the character development is brilliant. I think the writing is superb. I enjoy spending a lot of time with the characters because they're so well drawn. And uh, I did mention that I'm devoting however long it takes me in October to read this thing. And I've just been enjoying it. I haven't even been uh, impatient to get to my other books that are waiting in my proverbial TBR. So uh, that's saying something about the book. Uh, it's a very, very strong contender. I can call it early. That'll be one of the best books of this year. Now, while we're on the subject of character development, there's something I did want to mention about uh, Gus or Captain August McRae, the ex-Texas Ranger. You'll remember uh, in my last updates that I found him a bit of a tosser. I found him a little bit annoying and obnoxious, but his actions throughout part two uh, with a certain uh, rescue attempt that uh, people who have read the book will know what I'm talking about here, how he demonstrates his grace under fire and just kicks ass. I have a newfound respect for Gus now. He has redeemed himself a little bit in my eyes, with his actions, he's actually quite noble and quite, and has morals, and uh, it doesn't fail to impress. A couple of characters have died, uh, which uh, you know just reinforces the fact that no character in this book is safe. And I'm not going to say who has died because I don't do spoilers here. But um, yeah, I'm really, really anticipating a final confrontation between uh, Call and McRae against Blue Duck, the Comanchero, who is an absolute frightening character with what. He is capable of some of the scenes that I read in part two were very confronting and very graphic and uh, it was just brilliantly done and I still like how Larry McMurtry is spreading the characters out a little bit so you don't get sick of any one character at a time and yeah I'm just really really enjoying the ride so not much more to report there other than the fact that I'm loving this book and I feel that uh, part three of the book is going to fly along very quickly because I think a lot of things are going to come to a head there's plenty of drama there's plenty of action and uh, you know I used to think Jake Spoon was okay as being an ex-ranger and a friend to Cole and McRae but he's fallen from grace quite a bit in my eyes and I don't like what he has been doing so uh, it's funny how your your impressions of characters change over the course of the book and that's one of the things I like the most about this book it's always keeping you guessing it's not boring there's no info dumps or uh, you know extensive exposition about uh, the desert landscape 
Larry McMurtry paints just enough of a picture to feed your imagination and that is what it's all about that's what makes a writer great and um, yeah I understand perfectly how this book can be number one on the Goodreads Western genre fiction list so yeah I am enjoying it I look forward to finishing this up I'll probably have one more update video before I finish and of course I'll do a final wrap-up video where I just sum everything up uh, in one segment and uh, yeah can't praise this book enough and uh, once I finish I'll be preaching it on the channel let me uh, tell you but uh, thanks guys for watching and until my next update I'll catch you later and I'm back with another reading vlog update for Lonesome Dove by Larry McMurtry now you may notice that there is no bookmark in the book so this was originally going to be one last update video before powering through the last hundred pages to then have a final video to wrap everything up. Didn't turn out that way because late this afternoon I finished it. I thought, I got to the last hundred pages and I thought, yeah, look, I could do an update video, but I decided against that and just to plow on through and just go for it. And uh, let me tell you guys, this book absolutely hit me for six. It is a near flawless book. I, as I mentioned in my last update, I found myself committed to the book I didn't feel the need to just stop it and pick up something else because of uh, my normal impatience that tends to intrude but not this time the characters uh, the the events that happen in part three of the book just accelerate everything here comes to a head in part three there are unexpected um, uh, places where characters wind up their uh, story arcs uh, finish unexpectedly and not what you think so it's not a predictable book which I think is a very good quality uh, it kept me guessing and there were some surprising character deaths which of course those will not be mentioned in this video because as I've mentioned before I don't do spoilers here uh, but uh, there were some unexpected surprises and uh, yeah things happened that I didn't think would happen and there was uh, events with blue duck that uh, you know the uh, the Comanchero who uh, just terrorizes local communities. I thought uh, as I got towards the end that that um, part of the story wouldn't be resolved but in the end uh, the ending was very very satisfying and uh, it was it was just brilliantly done. This book has everything. It has lust, it has betrayal, it has courage, it has adventure, it has betrayal, it has um, bereavement, grief, action, gunfights, hangings it's just the complete package and uh, part three as I said just flew along um, at, uh, at, a, at a vicious pace I could not put it down the book was so good overall that uh, I found myself uh, looking for every opportunity to, to read it and normally look it's not always convenient to hold on to a house brick like this to read it so I actually had the audio version and I had a version on my mobile phone as well so uh, reading in bed on the mobile is a little bit more convenient uh, even though I only get to manage about three to five pages before I drop my phone um, after falling asleep and the audio book version came in handy especially um, at work during the day when I'm working on my computer and uh, in between calls I have it on in the background which means that it uh, allowed me to get through the book just that little bit quicker normally I'm not one for audio books uh, because I find them hard to retain but the narrator I don't know who read the audio book but their tone was very very engaging and it was a little bit different so that it allowed me to retain a lot more than what I normally would from an audio book and that's why I generally don't do audio but in this case I thought it was warranted because the book was so goddamn good um, it it brings all sorts of emotions out of you uh, you're emotionally invested in uh, a lot of the characters there they're very sympathetic characters they're multi-dimensional they have a lot of layers to them you care about them the part in uh, one part in part three that I really enjoyed we actually managed to spend a little bit little bit of time in uh, Captain Call's head to get to know him a little bit better and all throughout the book you don't really get to know him because he's so so standoffish and avoids people and doesn't like to engage in conversation uh, he is the kind of bloke that uh, at meal times around the campfire where all the cowboys and cattle hands are sitting around talking and uh, having their food he'd just rather have his food served up on his plate and uh, he'll just walk off and uh, spend time on his own so he was a bit of a loner and with his story arc in particular there are 
revelations, uh, you know, secrets and revelations that gets uh, revealed at the end of the book, which uh, was really well done by Larry McMurtry. He tied everything up neatly in a bow. I thought it was a very touching ending to the book, and yeah, I just had a really good time with it. I was shocked at some of the events. One particular character's demise, I thought was, it was a character I didn't really like, but I thought uh, they would have had a chance at redemption. And uh, I think his death was a little bit harsh. Uh, readers of the book will probably know where I'm going with this, but uh, yeah, I thought it was just a little bit harsh. And uh, you know, a couple of character deaths were very, very shocking, but uh, that's the whole appeal of the book. It uh, kept you guessing. It wasn't very predictable, which was great. And it just made you want to keep reading and reading. And I found myself committed and disciplined to stay with the book. Um, it wasn't really hard to commit to the book because it actually held my attention. Uh, I took my time with it. It took about a couple of weeks to read. But uh, in the end, I didn't really want it to end. Um, you just wanted to spend some more time with these characters. So it's no surprise when it's ranked number one on the Goodreads site for Western fiction. And I think summing it all up, it's the best introduction to the Western genre for me. Uh, I am so glad I picked this up. I was scared of it earlier in the year when I wanted to try and I just wasn't in the right headspace to tackle a book of this magnitude, but I'm so glad I picked it up. It's very very easy to read it's very very accessible so it uh, it isn't complicated larry mcmurtry's writing style is uh very smooth and engaging and uh he writes such rich characters so i can't really fault the book for anything um it was just brilliant and it's one to certainly tick off the bucket list and I'm certainly not going to hesitate to read more of larry mcmurtry's work in the future uh just Something I expressed in the uh, earlier updates about Larry McMurtry uh, alluding to uh, Cole and uh, Gus's past as Texas Rangers. I find that very, very fascinating. They had a lot of adventures that didn't go into a lot of detail about in here, but it's the later books that are actually prequels. So I'm either going to read the sequel to this, which is Streets of Laredo, or I'm going to read Comanche Moon uh, next. And uh, it won't be long before I pre-order one of those. And it certainly uh, piqued my interest with what the Western genre is all about. And I'm certainly going to read a lot more Western fiction moving forward. But guys, that is it for my reading vlog. Thank you very much for following. Thank you for watching. Uh, I had a great time and uh, these vlogs are always fun to do because it's always unscripted. If my hair's not right, who cares? If I'm in my pyjamas when I'm giving um, an update, who cares? Uh, I like it to be sort of uh, a bit more organic and, uh, and natural so I don't have notes I'm referring to. But uh, I tell you what, if you have not picked up this book, and you've never read westerns before it's going to be the perfect introduction for you i just love the book and it's seriously going to be uh ranked pretty high in my uh top 10 list of 2022 books so uh that is all I've got to say. Uh, it took me a little while to, um, you know, I finished it early this afternoon and I just needed a bit of time to actually gather my thoughts and let it all sink in. And uh, when I finished the last page, I just uh, sighed and thought that was just amazing. So there you go. Thanks very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, guys, see you later.